Welcome back to Hey Try This Guys and I've had a crazy week this week. One of my videos actually got more than 200,000 views. I've never had any videos more than that at all. It's called the Acid vs iPhone video. I'm gonna put it right here. Check it out, enjoy. Anyway, today I'll be reviewing the uh, lens that I just borrowed off my girlfriend. It's called the 24mm to 1.4 aperture lens. Now I can't believe Sigma had pulled this off. It's very hard to make a lens with that focal length and with that type of aperture. So that means it's really fast and you can produce a blurring background usually called bokeh or whatever it's called. Anyway, this is the lens on a Sony camera. I know what you're thinking is like, why are you shooting with Sony? Sony is actually pretty good. Uh, it has four 42 megapixels, but that's another story. Let's focus on the Sony, on the Sigma lens. Now look at that, that build right there. The Sigma lens is pretty much almost bigger than the Sony body. I'm using an MC11 adapter for a Canon mount Sigma lens, so I could mount it on this uh, Sony um, camera. So I will show you the comparison between this lens the 24mm to 70mm to the 24mm altogether. Now this is 2.8 aperture, almost double the amount of aperture of that, so it's a lot more slower, almost two times slower, and this one's a two times faster, obviously. Now my first Sigma lens is actually the Sigma 35mm. This was my go-to lens that I used to shoot at weddings. Now I tend to use this on the groom side because grooms tend to move a lot, you know, and you still get the bokeh as well. But this is a lot more wider, so this is gonna be fantastic for me because I'm being able to shoot more dynamically, especially in closed spaces, in people's houses or rooms, and be able to get those dynamic shots from the bottom, or get wider shots from uh, bridesmaids or groomsmen, playing around, mucking around as well. So it's a great thing to be able to have. Not only that, if you use this 24 mil lens, on a crop sensor, for example, an 80D or 70D, you'll be able to have almost the same app, uh, the focal length as a 35mm. So you're better off, if you really think about it, you're better off getting a 24mm first off. Especially if you've got a Sony body. Now because of that reason, the Sony body can go full frame and then do crop as well. So you can actually, in, inbuilt, can crop the sensor to use a 24mm and becomes 38mm. So almost the same as this lens right here. So that's really useful if you've got a Sony uh, camera with a Sigma 24mm. Alrighty, anyway, I wanna show you this as well. Now the 24mm is almost the same size as the 35mm. You see this 24mm here, it's a lot more beefier, a lot more thicker on the, the width, but it's almost the same height. That doesn't really matter overall, I'm just showing you the comparison. But it has a bit of a bulge on top. Now this one over here, I've got a bit of filter on it. I'll take it off real quick. But this I've noticed has a bit of a bulge. Now I think what I've noticed, anything that has a, a very wide focal length tends to have a bit of a bulge on the lens to be able to get more information from the sides, giving it more of a wide, uh, wide view space. 35 mil doesn't have much of a bulge, but you can see it's there. Usually wider lenses are like that. Alrighty. Now, the build quality of these lenses are fantastic. And now, because, the reason is, even if you're on auto mode, if you're switching on auto mode on the camera, you can still move that around. And that's, that's really useful. You also notice the focus, focal length as well, focal point as well, distance over here, which is fantastic if you like to read that while you're focusing. And you can go back on manual as well. Now I'm using the MC11 adapter instead of Metabones because the MC11 adapter by Sigma allows you to use all Sony functions on Sony uh, lenses with a Sigma lens. Only the Art Series though. So make sure you get an Art Series to be able to use all the Sony um, functions on there because it's newer technology. Okay, so I'm gonna be shooting more with this and this, and you'll be seeing the comparison video and the comparison photos as well. And we'll see which one's better. So, so this is comparison footage of the 24mm Sigma and the 24 to 70mm Canon. Now the 24 to 70mm Canon is running on at 2.8 aperture, and the Sigma lens is running at 1.4 aperture. And you can obviously see that because it's more blurrier 
background in the Sigma lens and the Canon lens is not as blurry in the background. You can see the ladder and the barrel in the background much more clearer on the Canon lens and the Sigma lens is a lot more blurrier. So meaning there's a lot more better uh, subject isolation that I'm focusing in the middle of the pot plant there and it's much more better and easier to see. Now this is what I did for the pot plant is I went as close as possible for the pot plant roots and the Sigma actually went a lot more closer than the Canon lens. So macro on the 24mm of the Sigma is actually a lot more better even though this doesn't even state macro. So I definitely recommend getting the 24mm Sigma instead of the 24-70mm to even though the 24-70mm to is a zoom lens. Now you can see there's once again more, much more blurry background, much more uh, subject isolation and it just has that much more creamier look as well. And the Canon lens doesn't produce that at all. You've noticed that there's a lot more uh, definition in the background. And once again, I had to step back because it doesn't even focus on the pot plant because that's how close I, I could only get. So you can see like it's a little bit wider, but really I couldn't even get into focus if I was to stand as close as the Sigma lens. So this is a comparison uh, photo I've taken on the Sony on full raw. I focused at the back there on that gazebo and you've noticed that it's a lot more blurrier on the Sigma lens just in the foreground with the plants that's closest to the camera and you've noticed that it's much more clearer as well and a lot more definition on the 24mm um, Sigma lens. Now with the lenses I cannot stress the Sigma is so much better than the Canon lens. Um, I'm going to zoom into the branches there and you can see there's a lot more chromatic aberration on the Canon lens. You can see a lot more lens dispersion there. Obviously this is a zoom lens, there's a lot more moving parts so it doesn't look as good. So Sigma lens is all the way guys. If you want really really good quality photos, go use a prime Sigma lens. Uh, take it uh, on the next step for your photography and definitely get it. Once again guys. Thanks for watching. Remember to support my channel. Hit like, hit subscribe, comment below if you want to see different things in the future. Tell me what you want to see as well. Remember to check out my other video, Acid vs. iPhone. Check out the adapters review as well from the MC11 Sigma adapter and the Metabones adapter. And I'll see you guys in the next one.